start my speech i would just uh, like to request the concerned person to please record the speech okay thank you thank you Sorry. 23rd january 2018 that was the day when i first stood on the stage to deliver my icebreaker i wrote that speech six different times and every time i included a completely different version i wrote about everything then the time travel tv series books but never a word about myself that's how scared i was to talk about the things that were about me or that were personal to me so in the end i finalized one of the versions i decided to talk about anything not anything in general but literally on the topic anything that speech concluded with something like you can be anything you want if you befriend mr challenge which translated to that you can do anything in your life if you are ready to face your fears and the challenges that come in your way so today 2 years 6 months and 5 days later i'm standing on the same stage and i'm about to talk about something that is very close and very personal to me and something which all of us very conveniently forget we look for love in all the unconventional places but there is one love which there is one place where we forget to look we do not even realize it's there until one day it's not the love of the family something which has truly shaped us into what we are today whenever we think about the people we have for ourselves we very easily resort to saying things like i don't know if somebody cares for me i don't know if somebody loves me or not but before we go into all those sad and pseudo depressing thoughts i would just like to tell you a story of five people have always challenged these thoughts of mine but only if i think about it ever since i was a child i used to love toffees and sweets especially those eclairs that came in those red and golden wrappers and my grandfather was very well aware of my obsession with the same but my parents they weren't too keen that i have too many sweets so what grandfather used to do was he used to buy a handful of those sweets and hide them at a place which only him and i knew about then whenever i wanted to have any toffees i would just go there and grab a handful and put them in my pocket and just wink at him but i always thought that he did that because i loved those toffees but on a side note he was as big of a fan of them as i was until sixth standard i saw him standing outside my classroom's window wearing those specs and this very hat ready to pick us from the school he used to bring his white and red kinetic which i used to hate because it made a lot of noise but now is still parked outside our house and on the way back home he used to tell me stories about all sort of characters which existed but only in his head i also had a difficulty in sleeping at night so but i knew that if i went to my parents they would just send me back to sleep so what i used to do was i went to the room where my grandfather was sitting and i just used to peep in waiting for my grandfather to notice me and then when he did i would just quietly go back into my room and there he used to be 5 minutes later ready to put me to sleep with all sort of stories from his childhood from his life and from everything i there was not even a one single day when i slept without him not one day love i think my grandfather defined the word love for me i don't even know there is one person in this world who will be able to love me as much as he did but i only realized it when i felt the void of his absence that's when i realized what i'm missing <laughs> love nobody loves me right when i was in college and whenever i used to come back home i received that my grandmother used to be sitting there asking me the same questions every day talk to me show me your pictures tell me the stories about your friends every single day i used to answer that like for 30 to 35 minutes and then i used to be like huh, i don't know i've already told you everything i don't have anything else to tell you i just showed you my pictures yesterday what else do you want to see but she used to say that every day so what to talk more and i did when i was back in the college i received that one phone call from my parents 
every day with my grandmother on the other side. Did you eat? Did you have your dinner? Are you sure you are fine? Every day without fail. When I got my job, my grandmother was a person who was on cloud nine. But she asked this question to my father every day. Is it for sure? Are you sure her job is confirmed? And I used to be so irritated. Why don't you trust me? Yes, it is. A few months back, she was admitted to a hospital. She became so ill that she couldn't speak. She couldn't talk. She stopped recognizing me. She stopped asking me how my day was. And she stopped asking me to show me her pictures. My father told me that the only time she smiled during that was when he told her that I finally got my first title. I remember when I was going to Mumbai, I went to see her and she was still in the hospital and she couldn't talk. So she just held my hands like this and she wasn't letting them go. So uh, I remember telling her, uh, don't worry Dadima, when I'll come back, we'll go on a trip for sure. I want to show you so many places and you're going to be so fine when I come back. And so she just kissed my hand and that's when she let it go. I remember video calling her every day after that. And, and it was so disheartening for her to not ask me the same questions, to not ask me how my day was, to not even reacting when I said, Hello, Darima, how are you? And today, when I'm about to graduate, and I don't have my grandmother or my grandfather with me, who were so keen to see this day, it hurts. It hurts more than I can ever explain. It hurts more than I can ever imagine it would. I was, I was so used to having them around me all day long, all my life, that I never realized it. How, it, how would it be when one day they would just disappear? One day they wouldn't be there to love me. I realized that how much love they had for me only when one day I didn't experience it anymore. If, if this thing, this thing right here, if this isn't love, I don't know what it is. My father, my father, who, should, who is one of the strongest person I know, cried every time I left home from my college. He cried every time he scolded me for the stupid things he did. My father, I've seen him boasting about my achievements, big or small, in front of every person he has ever met. He, he can convince any person outside the house to do whatever he wants to, but he comes back home to me and my brother and listens to us and do what we ask him of. If that isn't love, I don't know what is. My mother, who is one of the most obedient person I've seen, who does never stand in front of anybody, who does whatever she's asked to. One time she stood in front of my father and my grandparents was when she wanted to change our schools, when she wanted us to have a better education, when she wanted us to be more successful in our lives. If that isn't love, I don't know what is. My brother, the person who is always seen as an introvert, who's always seen as somebody who doesn't talk to anybody or who is not concerned about what's going in anyone's life. One time in second year, I was going through a rough phase and I didn't know who to talk to. So I just called my brother and I just poured my heart out in a hope that maybe he'll listen to me. Maybe he'll listen to me. And he did. And he actually did. Throughout those six minutes of call, he didn't say one word and he listened everything that I had to tell him. If that isn't love, I really don't know what is. I'm again reiterating one of the most important things that I said. We are so used to the love that our family has for us that we do not realize how much of it is or how much it is affecting us. We realize it only when they are not there with us anymore. Don't let their absence realize you how much love you have for them because at that point, when your heart yearns for them and there's nothing you can do about it, there's nothing you can do to bring them back in your life, there's nothing you can do to talk to them again, to ask them stupid questions. That hurts. It just hurts. I cannot explain it any other way. It just hurts. Just go and talk to your parents. Just go and talk to your family. They haven't stopped listening. 
but you have stopped talking. They are still there, right there sitting, waiting for their son or their daughters to come and talk to them like they did. They are just there. You are not. You love them and they love you. No doubt in that. But as someone rightly said, you do not realize the importance of salt in your food till one day somebody forgets to put it. Don't let that happen. Just don't. 